Those who are driven are self-empowered by what burns inside them, drawn toward adventure and exploration, seeking out the unknown and the unexpected. Fire, ice, wind, snow, mountains, and raging waters, whatever lies ahead is for those who are driven over land. Each one yeah. of these trips has been like building on the last one yeah. and learning what to do better next time. Mm -hmm. And we figured we had it somewhat dialed in, so we're bringing other people into it with us. They've just been hearing and seeing bits and pieces of it mm -hmm. so far. Yeah. And so, you know, now we want to share it with other people. Yeah, and it's, I mean, overlanding isn't anything new to the world. It's been around for a long time. Um, some people call it car camping. It's different than car camping. I mean, it, if you want to define overlanding, it, it is self-reliant travel through remote terrain or remote regions. Um, some people wouldn't even consider what we do overlanding based on their own uh, the, the, their own um, experiences. Some people, you know, the guys that are living full time in their trucks and they're driving to Patagonia, you know, <laughs> over a period of years, or living full time in their in their land cruiser or land rover and touring Russia or Africa. You know right. those people probably wouldn't look at our, our you know our what we do as, as overlanding. But for our standards it's mm -hmm. it's um it's really it really, it's really cool. But our little glimpse of Colorado and our little BDR route that we take and just getting from Texas to that point is pretty unbelievable. Um, the things that we see while we're in Colorado to me were unbelievable yeah. the first time I saw them yeah. and continue to be every <laughs> single time that we go there. Um, yeah. So it's definitely worth it to me to have done this route mm -hmm. three times now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, want to share it with other people and have them be excited about the things that we're excited about every time yeah. we go. Texas is so big, it typically takes a day of driving to hit the border. We left Austin early and chased thunderstorms through expansive wind farms before winding through county roads in New Mexico's Sangre de Cristo Mountains. We stopped for lunch and had a little fun in Red River. Great Sand Dunes National Park was an epic stop. At over 700 feet tall, they are the largest and tallest sand dunes in North America.
Overlanding to me is getting away and relaxing. Overlanding to me is self-reliance. It's getting out there, getting to the middle of nowhere, and knowing it's up to you and the guys you're with to get yourself out. So when you start getting stuck and encountering those obstacles that you really get to get that challenge and get that exhilaration of getting yourself out. I think the thing that's standing out most in my mind while preparing for this trip is how reliable is this vehicle going to be? It's a 15 year old vehicle I bought six months ago. Since I've owned it, I've done every weekend wrenching on it, rebuilding the engine, new exhaust, putting skid plates on it, building roof racks. And I'm just hoping it's rugged enough to make the entire trip 3,000 miles to Colorado and back. So. Whitewater rafting in the Royal Gorge is an excellent time. That's our own. That's our own. Cruising through Tomichi Basin, you begin to get a sense of scale for the Rocky Mountains. We found a beautiful little creekside campsite between Los Pinos Pass and the ghost town of Cathedral. We made camp earlier than usual and enjoyed a chill evening together. Day five, we got after it, with a full day above 11,000 feet, over Cinnamon Pass to the ruins of Animus Forks mining town for lunch, then over California, Hurricane, and Corkscrew Pass.
Hey, you girl, what you doing up here in this mining town? <laughs> You're the only girl among 500 dirty, nasty, lonely men. <laughs> then I'm out. Then I'm out. Yeah, I'm on the first train <laughs> out. <laughs> Overlanding to me is for you. It's just the opportunity to go places and sleep there and stay there if you want and move on if you want. It's just, honestly, it's just freedom. And it's the opportunity to see uh, things that many other people don't get to see. It takes you know, a special vehicle to see some of the spots that, that you get to see when you're overlanding. And I think that's, that's a big appeal to it to me is an escape. It's a, it's a great way to get out of your normal daily routine of house and chores and work and kids and go out in nature and, and do things that not everybody gets to do and go places that not everybody gets to see. Um, you go to bed when the sun goes down and you wake up when the sun comes up and you just get to kind of escape. Just take life outside of your normal routine and just get away. Enjoy nature. Be, be outside. Get away from technology. This year, Colorado saw heavy snowfall late in the season. They had numerous avalanches. We had the opportunity to drive through the largest one. 15-foot walls of snow on either side with tree trunks sticking out made for a one-of-a-kind passage. Clear Lake is a stunningly beautiful blue lake situated at nearly 12,000 feet and surrounded by even higher peaks. Even though the water was very cold, we decided to wade out into it. I've never really been the one who's worried. Always been the one who's keeping it cool. Everything. The kind of guy who chill while others hurry. I didn't know that I've been the fool. God! <laughs> telling lies about something real. But I know love is based on... Get me out! <laughs> 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 
Karang. Oh. Oh. Reactions from the crowd. <laughs> I want to get under your way. I don't think it's too long, but I went under. The only other Mitsubishi Montero we saw on the entire trip was this rad late 80s Gen 1. Leaving this picturesque valley, we go through a few water crossings before heading over the crazy shale-covered Ophir Pass. Nothing quite like Imaging Pass for white knuckled off-road driving. Sheer rock face on one side and a thousand foot drop on the other. There is no room for error.
Creek Trail was pretty technical. It was a great way to start the day, making our way up to Engineer Pass. This has got to be one of the best 360 views in the Rockies. Just yeah. 